Hello and welcome to the session in which we would look at the cost of inventory. What's included in the cost of inventory? In the prior session, we focused on the word inventory. What is inventory? We discussed the periodic inventory system. We discussed the perpetual and we explain why inventory is an asset and specifically why is it a current asset. In this session, we need to be a little bit more specific. We need to know what's included and the cost of the inventory. So when we record the inventory, what dollar amount do we add to the inventory that we have? The general rule is this, any cost necessary to bring the inventory to a saleable condition is part of the cost of the inventory. If I ask you what should be the largest cost and hopefully you would answer immediately, it's the purchase price. When we buy an item, let's assume we buy an item for $1,000, that's part of the cost of the inventory. We might have to pay 6% taxes. Well, if that's the case, we're going to add $60 to that item because you cannot buy it unless you pay the taxes. You might have to pay for freight in. Freight in is transportation. And we'll discuss transportation a little bit more in depth. When you buy something, and let's assume you had to pay $100 to, to, to ship it to you, that's part of your cost. And notice here I have the word freight in, not out. We were going to see freight out somewhere else. Freight out is not part of the inventory cost because inventory is an asset. And anything that's included in inventory, it becomes an asset. Insurance while in transit, let's assume we paid $50 or $40 of insurance while in transit because we want to protect this item. It's part of the cost. Let's assume we paid $50 packaging. This item needed special packaging. We had to pay $50. So all these costs. So up to this point, this item cost us $1,250. Although the price of it, the cost of the item itself is $1,000, but the total cost is $1,250. Now, if we receive any discount, any sort of a discount, we will deduct. Let's assume they gave us $50 discount, or let's make it... $30 discount. I don't want to use the same numbers. So we have a discount. We can deduct the discount. Let's assume we returned $1,000 from this order. We returned uh, $200 worth of items from this order. Or they gave us an allowance. Allowance means they, re they reduced the price because maybe they shipped it late. All those are included in the cost of the inventory. Notice the discount is a minus returns and allowances are a minus they gets deducted so if you ask me how much did that item cost you would say this item cost if my math is right one thousand one hundred and seventy dollars that's the cost of the item so you need to know what's included what's not included in the cost of the inventory pretty straightforward there are a few other topics that we have to be careful about when we count inventory fob shipping or fob destination this topic is covered also in your audit course because when you audit inventory, you have to know the terms FOB shipping, FOB destination. What does it mean? You would need to know about consigned goods. What is consigned goods? You need to learn about sales with repurchase agreement and sales with high rate of return. In this session, I'm going to focus on FOB shipping, FOB destination, consigned goods because those are special situations where you have to be careful what to count in your inventory and what not to count. Let's go ahead and get started discussing FOB shipping, FOB destination. Before we proceed any further, I have a public announcement about my company, farhatlectures.com. Farhat Accounting Lectures is a supplemental educational tool that's gonna help you with your CPA exam preparation as well as your accounting courses. My CPA material is aligned with your CPA review course such as Becker, Roger, Wiley, Gleam, Miles. My accounting courses are aligned with your accounting courses broken down by chapter and topics. My resources consist of lectures, multiple choice questions, true-false questions, as well as exercises. Go ahead, start your free trial today. So for FOB shipping, FOB destination, the question becomes, when you purchase something and it's in shipment, whose inventory is it? Sometimes you might purchase something, it may take you a week, weeks, a month, 
maybe six months to, to for that item to arrive so during shipment who owns the item well who owns the goods while in transit so who owns the risk and the reward this is what we have to know because whoever owns the risk and the reward in other words you have this item it's your responsibility if you lose it it's your risk if you can sell it for more that's your reward so that's the question recognize inventory and related liability at the time the company controls the asset so who's in control because whoever's in control of the asset has the risk and has the reward and I'm gonna simplify this explanation giving you two options let's assume we want to buy a pizza pretty straightforward what are our options if you want to buy a pizza well we have two options we can order a pizza and we have two options option one is to drive the car our own car to the pizzeria and pick the pizza ourselves or hire someone to pick it on our behalf simply put we paid for the shipment or we drive our we drove our own vehicle or what else can we do we can ask the pizzeria to deliver so this is option two and option one is for us either to drive our own vehicle the company vehicle or hire someone but we are hiring that individual basically it's our car so we can either go and pick it up ourselves or or pay someone to pick it up for us or we tell the pizzeria you deliver it once you deliver it if you deli deliver it to me I will pay you now let's put some terms on this FOB shipping the risk of loss is with the buyer so option one is we have it FOB shipping FOB shipping means what it means we drove or we hired someone it's our shipment so as soon as we pick up that pizza from the pizza store as soon as we open the door and step outside that store it's our pizza it may take us two hours three hours or a full day to deliver it regardless the product becomes if it's FOB, of FOB shipping the risk and reward lies with the buyer that's FOB shipping so the risk of the loss lies with the buyer so the title passes as soon as you leave the pizzeria it's your pizzeria you can go outside you can sell it for more than when you buy it bought it for you may slip and fall and lose it you risk you risk you have both the risk and the reward the other option is to buy it FOB destination FOB destination is risk two is option two option two you tell the pizzeria you use your own vehicle you use your own driver I'm not responsible for anything it's I'll pay you for the pizza when you deliver it so the risk of the loss is with the seller so so if the individual driving this vehicle got into an accident and the pizzeria could not make it you have no loss because it's their pizza so the title passes to the buyer when the pizza is delivered now I gave you this simplified short example buying pizza which is the time from delivery from manufacturers uh, from the person that's selling to the person that's buying it's very short but the same concept applies if you are shipping if you are buying something from China and shipping it in a boat in a plane it may take a few days a few weeks the concept is the same who owns the good while in transit if something happened to those goods and that's the party that's responsible now if I wish FOB shipping FOB destination now we simplify things because you can also transfer the risk in the real world to the shipper but that's again who's transferring the risk to the shipper is the person responsible for the inventory very important concept in intermediate accounting uh, cost accounting audit that's very important because when you're counting inventory you have to account what's included what's included sometimes the shipment is in transit but it's our inventory now let's take a look at this multiple choice question from farhatlectures.com which of the following shipment terms are goods in transit at the balance sheet date reported at the inventory of the buyer so when we have 
goods that we purchased under what circumstances that inventory is recorded on the buyer's balance sheet while it's in transit so we have the buyer here purchase and we have the seller the buyer purchased something but that goods is in transit it did not make it all the way to the buyer when do we include the goods as part of the buyer is it fob destination fob shipping fob destination and shipping it has to be one none of the above now one of the above is correct under fob shipping point the buyer takes ownership while in transit fob shipping point it means the buyer is responsible for the goods the buyer is responsible for the risk and the reward while in transit therefore the goods are part of the buyer's inventory what should you do now you want to go to farhat lectures look at additional resources multiple choice true false exercises lectures any resources you can find to help you understand this concept better the best investment you can make is invest in yourself good luck study hard and of course stay safe